You, you like a high, you like a high sitting position. Is it on yes, this side? Yes, you, you either like it or not. Because look, Mercedes have this. You have to put that hard. There. there we go. Um, this philosophy that um, if the seat is too comfortable, you can fall asleep. Yeah. So they make it uncomfortable, so you don't. <laughs> so well, I don't like that. Maybe the Germans were thinking that. Yes. So then we put oh. cushions in. So this is a. 84, 5 litre, litre V8, and um, you know, it really is engineering at its best. And this, they, they stuck with this engine for about a decade. Oh, yes, uh, yes. I think from, I don't know, right up until, you know, about 20 years, I think they stayed with this engine. I'm assuming this is the one you drive the most, but it's closest to the exit. <laughs> no, I, sw I, swapped I swapped them around. I was driving this car early in the week, okay. and um, and and this I changed around. Um, you know, if the sun's shining, I say to Gracie, "Oh, come on, let's go out in this car." You know, it's. Um, Yes, yes. Look, at the, one of the Mercedes guys says, oh, it's got the wrong exhaust. You know, it should be the, the turn down exhaust. This is an aftermarket one. Yes, I've got a stainless steel exhaust on it. And, uh, and really, it doesn't worry me uh, if you get a little bit of soot in the back there. But um, look, the engine doesn't smoke. It stops straight away. Uh, Yes. This is an 82. 84. 84. 84. Have you ever had one of those 60, 80, 72 No, I haven't. No, no, I've seen them, but I haven't, I'll tell you something, I haven't had one, no. Um, and you got it's just, you actually have to look around and see, they, they do come up occasionally, but they were, and it's like, I knew a chap who had a, th I think a 300 open top 68 sure. convertible, and that was gorgeous. But it was left hand drive, but he emigrated to Canada and took it to Canada with him. It was a blue one, I said, oh that was a gorgeous car, really, really lovely car. And uh, it, it's something that, well, I suppose like the British cars that if you go back to the early days, the, the Morgans, the Jaguars, the Rileys, but they were all, and the Rovers, beautifully made actually. But, you know, it, with, with the progression and to reduce the weight, you start using more plastic and thinner metal yeah. and, and whatever. Um, but at the end, this is something that, um, I like the new uh, Merck sports cars, but I still think this is this is better. It's right. really, it is. It's classic actually. Exactly. And, uh, uh, and you've got low. Did you find a difference having the low profile tires compared to the, the, the regular? These are not quite. Now, the the Mercedes came out with what they call a balloon tire, and but the car when I bought it had, believe it or not. AMG wheels on it, which were low profile, you see, and and wide, but the geometry wasn't right, yeah. so it it never felt stable on the road. Yeah. I just didn't like them. Yeah. So then I thought, well, then I'm, I said to Richard, I'm just going to go and buy some more wheels. Well, they, these, believe it or not, are Chinese wheels. Oh, so they're, they're not even. No, they're not well. Mercedes. No. I, I suppose if you look hard, hard at them, they've got these 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 things which probably Mercedes yes, wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't do. Yeah, <laughs> and and of course I I I managed to get these to fit, 
And, but they also had low-profile um, tires on them. Yeah. So I, I went to a tire company and I said, look, the Mercedes is 16-inch wheel, or is it 15, I think, and it has the balloon tire, which yeah. is... And I said, look, these are slightly... I think this is a 16-inch. Yeah. And I don't like the low profile, and I don't like the balloon tyre. I want the total diameter to be the same as the Mercedes spec. So yeah. he, he looked through what he's got, and he said, this tyre will do the job. And it's within probably one centimetre as the Mercedes spec of that distance. And, as it came and, out of the and it drives perfectly. 225 and, by 40, 17 inch room. Yes. And it drives perfectly. The steering, the, whereas the other one, and as you can see, this has got the AMG skirts on it and whatever. Sure, Some people say they don't like it, you see, but I said, no, I don't have a problem with the skirt on it. Nothing wrong with that. No, <laughs> no. And, and it, it was bought in Zimbabwe, and a lady had it, and I've actually got her... ID, a picture of her in the, in the car, and she only drove it for about, I don't know, about 12,000 Ks, and then sent it, it came down to Cape Town, so I bought it virtually as a new car. Any, uh, any overheating issues? Nothing at all, none, no overheating, nothing at all, and um, as I say, the only problem was when we found that there was a, a leakage in the block and, and in the end we had to drill the, this little hole out and plug it with aluminium and whatever and they said oh I'd sell that because maybe if it's a cancer in there and, but it <laughs> never it never happened again it, it, it was just the once and um, and obviously I had to put a new exhaust on it uh, I put the wheels on but other than that nothing else at all. no and original engine yes and even the hood has got the stickers on, on the, the hood and whatnot. So it's, uh, no, there cannot be many around because the mileage on this at the moment is, say, 84, 16, 16. What is that? That's 30, 38, and then 38 years. And it's done. 59,000 59, in 16, that's 30, 36 40, years, yeah. I mean, it's about one and a half thousand Ks a year. It's hardly even broken in. No, no. So... Um, and the, 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 those classic uh, air condition events, the round ones. Oh, yes, yes. Now, that's the only thing I need to fix now is um, the air conditioner has a seal gone and uh, I took it to the air conditioning people and they said well what you need somebody's got to take the compressor off to re do the seal then they'll regas it so um, there's a guy in the strand who said that he will do it for me so and then I might also change the oil in it because it's been standing. Uh, I, I last changed the oil about I don't know about three thousand k's back, and uh, but we had a chap from the oil company who came to to a club, and he said, "I don't know why you guys worry about your oil." He said, "It's been in the grounds for millions of years. Why do you worry if it's only been in your engine?" <laughs> 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 a year or more, you worry about it, you know, and, and he has a point, you know. So, but I think I will change the oil in this, um, and and that's all it needs, really. And the old Mass 230 used to overheat a lot uh, on long distances. Was that a radiator issue with those? It may have been, you know. I, I, as I say, I changed the radiator on my 450. And it never cured it. Yeah, it still was, so yes, it might but I never had trouble with the um, that 280, that cream one. Yeah. Um, and that was a straight six, wasn't it? It was straight six. Yeah. 
But again, it was a good car, so, you know. Yeah. It was yes. The three fifty in that was exceptional. Mm. Yeah, but but your dad had trouble with them. Um, the two eighty, mm. oh, two thirty E. Didn't he have a three fifty? He had a four twenty. A four twenty. Yeah, that, that was a beautiful engine in there. Yes, but he didn't he have trouble with the um, timing chain or something. At the end, it started giving issues. Yes, and and but look, that happens it, with with the. XJR v, V8, but the timing um, chain it has a tensioner. And can you believe it? The tensioner part of it is made in plastic. <laughs> so they said, well, in, you know, maybe you should change them. Now I hadn't had trouble with mine, but I remember your father having trouble that if the timing chain, the tensioner goes, the chain just goes loose and it seizes the engine. And then is a whole new engine. You yeah. Know. So I then changed all the the the, the tensioners, and uh, I bought them from England. And and a Jaguar said, "No, you don't need to do." It. I said, "No, you don't need to until you 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 know." Then it goes wrong. You better do it before it goes wrong. But well, interestingly, even the ones I I I replaced them with, they then found that other people had trouble even with them and then they came out with like a phosphor bronze type tensioner <laughs> and uh, and then I thought well maybe I should just sell the car you know because but you can't believe that they actually build an engine with a part that that's, nobody in their right mind is going to put plastic in an engine Built-in obsolescence. Well, I don't know. Henry Ford used to look for parts that didn't break and made sure they broke on future cars. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, look, the Rolls had a the the Speedo had a fibrous drive f for the Speedo, and obviously over time the fibre because it's, it's it's like this Bakelite stuff, and that ages, and then of course the Speedo didn't work, and I had to get somebody to make a brass. Uh, it's a cog for the the speeder drive, and he said no. He understands the the Rolls Royce, and and that is a fault. And I'll make you a brass one. And he made in Durban. He made a brass one for me. Never had a problem with it since. But why put something in there that could be suspect? Doesn't make sense. Make does money it? on the after sales. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, and and, uh, and and the next one on the list is your, I guess, your most sensible two cars. These two here, yes, yes. I mean, we like both of these, actually. The, the, these are both best of German, best of British. And, of course, we've got the, the BSA over here, too. Save the best to last. Yes, <laughs> yes. And this is the 2.2 .2 diesel in here? 2.2, .2, yes. And... Um, it, it actually is so nice, so pleasant to drive, and... Um, Immaculate. It is, and, and, it, and oddly enough, when I bought it, um, they said, oh no, they're stopping making these, we're, we're reducing the price, and... <laughs> <laughs> so, well then I take it, yes. I, I, it seems like you're not a big sunroof guy. No, there's, a, there's, a, no, the, oh, is this the, one got a sunroof? that's got a sunroof. Yeah, okay, it's got one there. But is it a sunroof? There's glass on the top. I don't know whether it opens or not. Yeah, it does. It does open. Yeah. Yes, it is a sunroof. Yeah. Um, look, the, the, the trouble is though, Greg, sun on your head in this country yeah, is, is not, not good. good in the Europe, it's fine, but here yeah. it's not good. So, the XJ had a sunroof. And I never used it. And the the um, that Mercedes, the cream Mercedes, had a sunroof. Never used that either, or very rarely. So. And this has got the two point seven to. Uh, two point seven. Yes. Any issues with this car? Only the, the the only problem I had with this was the these the um, turbo um, fan has a shroud on it. And and it cracked, and and we, we the the car was smoking, and what it was doing, it was drawing too much air into the car, 
which was then bringing too much diesel into the engine and the car went but it was just smoking and so I put um, a new um, uh, believe it or not an oxygen it has an oxygen meter on the engine they said do that first then do the injectors so we took all the injectors out cleaned them and, and replaced wherever necessary it still smoked and and the bills are mounting up. I'm now I, I'm, I'm looking at about 25,000 or something, you know, and we still haven't cured the problem. And the, the guy then, he got underneath the car and he said, I, the problem is the shroud for the air intake is broken. And he said, we, and we get a new one, it'll cost 5,000 rand, so now we're in for 30,000 for fixing <laughs> it. And the car was only worth about 50,000. But... It solved all the problems, and and the car has got so much more energy, so much more power. So and it's, I mean, this will do six and a half liters to a hundred k's. Sure. You see, that's unbelievable for an old car. Yeah, and uh, and sometimes they, I wouldn't mind buying a new one, but what's the point? Yeah, I mean, it's comfortable, it's reliable. Um, it's not. It doesn't good. rattle, it doesn't shake, it, it, yeah. it doesn't smoke. Um, look, I think diesels, by and large, is, they, they, they don't smell very nice. I must be, I'm quite understand why they don't like them in Europe, I think. Do you but, get the smell inside the car? No, you don't, no. But if you stand at the back, it doesn't smell that good, I must admit. It, you could say the same about the, 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 the Rolls Royce one. Oh, <laughs> well, that's just <laughs> pumping out. <laughs> Gas is going out the back at an alarming lick, isn't it, really? And then, uh, and then uh, your coup de grace, yeah? it, Well, this is it, yes. The BSA, 1931. And uh, you either call it a three-wheeler or a tricycle or whatever. In this country, they don't know what it is. Uh, I, I register it as a motorbike because you have a motorcycle combination, a three-wheeler. So it, it, it's classified as a motorcycle here. Sure, and it almost looks like a, a boat from the back. It does almost look like a boat. And it actually drives almost like a boat <laughs> because, you know, it With does... It, it, yes, it, it, uh, Gracie used to use it for, for um, uh, rallies. But I said, to be quite honest, I think you could turn it over. So you should wear a crash helmet, you know. I, I, Definitely. Uh, because it, it, you are vulnerable. You've got to treat it like a motorbike. Yes. And... Uh, uh, do you, do you, is this sourced in Cape Town, or you have to look for this one? Um, well, this was... Um, it, it was actually in Durban, and, and I think there are three in this country. There's a club in England um, that... There could be up to maybe 50 or 60 of, of them, exactly the same as this. And this is probably better than the ones I've seen. They, I've seen pictures of the ones in England. Not many look quite as good as this one. Nick. No, this one's... In, look, this was... There was a chap I bought it from. His name was Aubrey Welton. And he did this. He actually built the woodwork. This is wood, actually. And he uh, had the, the chassis and the engine and whatever, and, and he put this thing together like this. And, and he loved his motorbikes and cars. And he died and I bought it from his widow. And, so, uh, and what year was this produced? 31. 31? So, uh, and uh, 69. 89, 9, 91, 92 years old. Sure. And uh, the... Um, this is like what, the motoring, me the museum's probably like knocking on their door. Their yes, door the absolutely, door. yeah. Look, it's all highly dangerous. You've got the fuel tank on top of the battery, so if you have a spark <laughs> here, you could blow the car up. Oh, it goes. And... Um, the valves are exposed. This is supposed to have a cover on it like this, but the guys who 
um, rebuilt the engine for me got these on the wrong way this one should be on that one and um, but I said it's too much hassle now to change it yeah. so <laughs> I'll just leave it as it is but uh, look it's a thousand cc 998 um, cc and um, and it's air cooled you see it's got a radiator but there's no the radiator doesn't work so it's like a motorcycle air cooled engine is it just a never worked or, or no or it's, it's it's a dummy it's a dummy okay. in about 1933 or 34 they decided to put a, a, a four cylinder engine in it with a radiator and then they put another wheel on the back <laughs> so um look th this this is uh, it makes one hell of a noise a lot of clattering you hear all the the valve noise smoke and noise any chance of firing it up i <laughs> don't think it will it? it might do but uh, we can try so you have to, you have to be behind a, a safety glass <laughs> yes yes and, and driving this car with the three, with it's, three wheels? It's okay, but look, um, I need to get the brakes seen too. Um, there is a guy who will do this type of work, and uh, that is a, um, a job that needs to be done. And the, the, the handling must, it, is it, is it, it takes a bit of getting used to, I imagine. Oh, yes. Well, that's probably better having the two wheels in the front and the back for handling. Yes. Yes, I think so. And these tyres are from Noah's Ark. Yes. We'd have to do it another day. The, and the petrol pump, the tap, seems to be stiff and I can't understand why. How, how, how often do you get to drive this vehicle? I haven't driven it for a, a couple of years, I don't think. Sure. Okay. So uh, I can't understand why. No, there's nice. The old girl, 1931. Yeah. BSA. BSA is a, a motorcycle manufacturer, aren't they? Yes. Yes. That's probably why it's easy to classify as a motorbike there. Yeah. No, it's a six volt. Now let's see if there's any petrol in here. <laughs> Richie never take this, so you, the sons never take this out for a spin. No. There's petrol in there. I suppose Richie's more into su super bikes. I think so, yeah. You must get up to hell of a speed on those things. Yes. <laughs> See, there is a slight leak on the, it's leaking a bit on this side. Is it? What, the petrol? Yeah, there's something leaking out. Is there? Yeah. Oh, well then we won't... Oh, Christ, there is leaking in here. <laughs> yeah, too. that could be a bit of a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does smell like petrol. Yeah, no. Yeah, even the tap was leaking. Oh! <laughs> oh, well, that needs looking at. Oh. I think it needs a new tap, I think. Um, and now, you say, where was it leaking up? The car? Uh, over, it? over here, um, on the right-hand side of the car, you can see there's a puddle formed. Over oh. there. Just coming out here. Oh, well, that's coming out of the floor, I think. Yeah, it's not, because the carburetor's here, you see. This is the carburetor. Um, 
as far as I know. There's the carburetor. Um, uh, yeah, that must be coming out of the floorboards. It's <laughs> all <laughs> so happening. Yeah. It's coming out here somewhere. Yeah, it must be the floorboards. Okay. Well, it's the tap. See, the tap was stiff, and it's a motorcycle tap. It's a plastic thing, yeah. and so I'll need to go and get another one. Cars, they were French cars called Talbots, and he was smoking and was fiddling with the car, and the petrol came out and he blew himself up. And that was the end of him? No, it wasn't, no. He, he just singed all his eyebrows and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm. No, it's... Uh, Something that um, you see, I do. I put, keep these uh, battery mates on to um, keep the batteries okay. Keep the batteries okay. Yeah. What sort of speed would you cruise in this? <sighs> the same. Right? Yes, uh, sixty. Yeah, probably would do a hundred. It'll do a hundred, but again, it's got this yawing. Um, you know, the stability is not good. No. And and um, if you're on like the N1 or the N2 and you see a great big truck beside you, you know, up here, and now you're in this cockroach of a car, <laughs> you realise how vulnerable you are. Exactly. Now, I probably will sell this, I should imagine, because, um, you know, it, with all old cars, you need to be like an engineer. Yeah. And... Uh, um, I'm not really an engineer, and it becomes a hassle otherwise, you know, so... And you need to drive it regularly? Yes, yes. And how much, is this all still original? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah, other than the body, but the actual, yes, uh, yes. Look, I mean, this, this, uh, is, I would guess a minimum of a hundred thousand, it might go for more. Probably more in this yes, current yes, market. Yes, yes, I think it might go for more, actually to a collector so I think I might just consider that you know I'll, I'll get the thing get that petrol pump sorted and uh, have you had a lot of old bikes back in the, yeah all the, down there but they, they, they've all gone to uh, Holland and uh, oddly enough the guy who bought them he came to this Dave Lyons because he's got a house at um, uh, where the surfers go, I can't remember. Jeffreys. Jeffreys Bay. And um, he showed me photographs of the bikes in the museum in Holland. And yeah, so, because I thought he was going to sell them. I thought, you know, because I reckon they were worth more than what he paid. But on the other hand, they're only worth what somebody's prepared to pay. And for me, they didn't owe me any money. And they're just standing there like this thing. They're standing there, and in the end, you know, you want to use them, they won't go, you know. So. And didn't you have old Indians and BAS? I had two. Um, I had a. I'm trying to figure out two BMWs, um, a Vincent, two B31s. That's a 350 BSA, a 650. Rocket Gold Star, um, a 26 aerial, a 28 aerial, um, trying to figure out what else I had. Um, I had an Excelsior, which I still have, that's been uh, just fettled now. Um, and that must be it, I think, actually. I did have more. I had a BSA uh, 500 off-road bike. I had uh, two Greaves off-road bikes. Um, I had a, a 51 or a 52 BMW, which I sold. Um, so I had about 15 bikes at one stage, and then I started selling one or two at a time, and then 
this guy bought about a half a dozen from me, you know, and uh, and I just kept these and the Excelsior. And because at the end of the day, if you don't ride them, they then become a headache. Yeah. It's not, not something that I'm, you know, I don't want to go and have a heart attack trying to start a bike up. Yeah. <laughs> kicking it and what. And other people can appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I had a aerial 650 uh, 37, beautiful bike, a side valve. And um, if you want to do the Durban um, Johannesburg run called the DJ, it's got to be pre 30, 36 or older. And um, this was a 37, so it was no good. So it sat in the garage, and a friend of mine used to come and say, Oh, I love that bike, you see. And I said, well, if you pay me what I paid for it, <laughs> you can have it, which he did. And he then got the thing going. I said, it does go because I've written it, so I know it goes. And uh, he had to do a little bit of work on it, not much. And he kept it in a, like a little conservatory outside his kitchen in Durbanville. And I said, do you ever write? No, he said, I'm just happy to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and... You know, and I thought, well, at least it makes him happy, you see. Yeah. For me, they, I, they sit in the garage, I don't look at them, so it doesn't do much for you. You know, you've got to love something, haven't you, really, to, exactly. to appreciate it. And which, which, of, which of your current cars do you like the look of the most? Well, you know, it's very difficult to say, isn't it, actually, because I, I do like the 500 Merc, and we use it, we're going to use that on the 9th of... March, we're going to run, uh, they call it a top-down run, that's sports cars, that we're, we're going out. And I do like to drive the Jaguar, <laughs> the XK, I like that, actually. And the Rolls, well, I must now just get that um, sorted. But it's all work in progress, exactly. Greg. Yes. Fortunately, these two are reliable. And that, that, that well, these two are reliable. The, the Rolls is the only one that needs to be sorted and I must find out why that piece of the who knows. Are there any cars you regret selling? Over the the Alpha. The Alpha. Yes. I had a <laughs> photograph with Richard when he was a little boy and his grandfather down at Glen Cairn and you know the sea, the rollers are coming in, this lovely little sports car and um, and Annette complained saying, Well it's like this car. No, oh, it's only a little seat at the back and and then they said, well, I'll sell it, you know. But then afterwards I said, do you know what? I should never have sold it. But the, the thing was that the Alpha also was lightweight and it never had good road holding. And I used to go to Atlantis near Darling. And the, it, it, they were dirt roads, they put tar on them, so they're a bit bumpy. And if it's wet, the Alpha used to like bounce a bit. And, you, and there are a lot of trees on the side of the road. And I... One day, you know, the wheel turns a little bit and then you, you think, oh, I'm going for the trees. This is dangerous. Maybe I shouldn't have been driving 120 or something. <laughs> but that's why I went out and bought the 450. Because the Mercedes is heavy and it just... Pff, straight on the road. Whatever the bumps are, it doesn't deviate. And so the road holding the Mercedes is so much better than the Alpha. But the Alpha was a, a cute little car, and I regret selling that, because again, it was a beautiful little car. But in the end, perhaps you shouldn't sell anything, should you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, you know, when I think of in England, I had a, a 500 Gold Star motorcycle, um, a racing motorbike, I mean, I should never have sold that. I had an Excelsior like the one that's I've got here, exactly the same. I had a smaller Excelsior, and I had a Sunbeam. And well, that Sunbeam proper. Well, <laughs> but, I mean, they are just collectors' things, and I, uh, I just virtually gave it away. Even that little Prelude you had in, in the that. That was a nice little car yeah. too. I like that. But again, the metal was thin. 
It didn't pass your method No, test. it didn't pass the thumb <laughs> test. Richard had a skateboard in the back and he put it down with the wheels. And it, when you're driving around corners, the skateboard would go that way and then that way. And when I look at the car, I see all little dents, you know, <laughs> where there's stupid skateboards going backwards and forwards in there, you know. And that, to me, well, I think your dad, didn't he turn his prelude? Yeah, I, it, yeah. And Somewhere only in... Only one seat in, he would have survived and the one he was in, he would have been dead in the other seats. Yeah, so, look, again, um, they were nice cars. But again, they were. The, I thought they were quite heavy on fuel. Yeah. Mm. You, you battled to get below 10 litres to 100 k's, and it was a light car. But it was a snazzy little car, actually. But um, quite modern for its time. It was, yeah. No, I th I think they were they were nice cars, but um, in the end, um, I do prefer a solid car. <laughs> I prefer a Mercedes. <laughs> I prefer 